ever since the early days of man. They have always wondered how this world came into being. Many have believed that God created the universe. Different religions in history have different explanations for the creation process. Anyway, at present, the modern scientific community came together to support a particular theory, that explains the origin of universe. This theory which is widely accepted by most scientists is what is known as, the Big Bang Theory. This theory was proposed out of the observation that other galaxies are moving away from our own at great speed in all directions, as if they had all been propelled by an ancient explosive force. The Big Bang Theory was first proposed by a Belgian priest named Georges Lemaitre in the 1920s, when he theorized that the universe began from a single primordial atom. The idea received major boosts from Edwin Hubble's observations that galaxies are speeding away from us in all directions. If everything in the universe is flying apart, reversing the arrow of time would predict that at some point all of these galaxies were together in one incredibly massive entity. Hubble's observations started a deluge of experimental measurements that, over the last 70 years have led to the conclusion by the vast majority of physicists and cosmologists that the universe began at a single moment, commonly now referred to as the Big Bang. Calculations suggest it happened approximately 14 billion years ago. The particularly important documentation of the correctness of this theory was provided rather accidentally by Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson in 1965 when they detected what appeared to be an annoying background of microwave signals regardless of where they pointed their new detector. After ruling out all other possible causes, Penzias and Wilson ultimately realized that this background noise was coming from the universe itself, and that it represented precisely the kind of afterglow that one would expect to find as a consequence of the Big Bang, arising from the annihilation of matter and antimatter in the early moments of the exploding universe. So, according to Big Bang Theory, in the first 10 rays to, minus 43 seconds of its existence, the universe was very compact, less than a million billion billionth the size of a single atom. It's thought that at such an incomprehensibly dense, energetic state, the four fundamental forces, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces, were forged into a single force. But our current theories haven't yet figured out how a single, unified force would work. To pull this off, we had need to know how gravity works on the subatomic scale, but we currently don't. The laws of physics break down in this circumstance, this state is referred to as a singularity. It's also thought that the extremely close quarters allowed the universe's very first particles to mix, mingle, and settle into roughly the same temperature. Then, in an unimaginably small fraction of a second, all that matter and energy expanded outward more or less evenly, with tiny variations provided by fluctuations on the quantum scale. After inflation, the universe continued to expand but at a much slower rate. As time passed and matter cooled, more diverse kinds of particles began to form, and they eventually condensed into the stars, and galaxies of our present universe. So, this is is what is Big Bang is, there occurred several other processes in between this expansion, for some we have answers and for some others, we don't. Now, let us into some of the limitations of Big Bang Theory. Radiation in the early universe was so intense that colliding photons could form pairs of particles made of matter and antimatter, which is like regular matter in every way except with the opposite electrical charge. It's thought that the early universe contained equal amounts of matter and antimatter. But as the universe cooled, photons no longer packed enough punch to make matter-antimatter pairs. Many particles of matter and antimatter paired off and annihilated one another. Somehow, some excess matter survived, and it's now the stuff that people, planets, and galaxies are made of. But, why did this asymmetry exist? It would seem more natural for there to be no asymmetry. But, if there had been complete symmetry between matter and antimatter, the universe would quickly have devolved into pure radiation, and people, planets, stars, and galaxies would never have come into existence. The way in which the universe expanded. After the Big Bang depended critically on how much total mass and energy the universe had, and also on the strength of the gravitational constant. The incredible degree of fine-tuning of these physical constants has been a subject of wonder for many experts. 
If the rate of expansion of universe, after the Big Bang had been smaller by even one part in 100,000 million million, the universe would have recollapsed before it ever reached its present size. On the other hand, if the rate of expansion had been greater by even one part in a million, stars and planets could not have been able to form. The same remarkable circumstance applies to the formation of heavier elements. If the strong nuclear force that holds together protons and neutrons had been even slightly weaker, then only hydrogen could have formed in the universe. If, on the other hand, the strong nuclear force had been slightly stronger, all the hydrogen would have been converted to helium, instead of the 25% that occurred early in the Big Bang, and thus the fusion furnaces of stars and their ability to generate heavier elements would never have been born. Finally, even if there are many limitations for the The Big Bang Theory or there are many phenomena that this theory can't explain, it is still the best theory that explains about origin of universe. So, thanks for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, and press the bell icon.